Let's talk about the purpose of EP additives. We'll talk about applications, and we'll talk about some of the drawbacks of having EP additives in your formulation. So if you remember on our video about the Strybeck curve, we talked about how there's a relationship between this term Zn on P and the coefficient of friction. And we kind of talked about boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication, and hydrodynamic lubrication. So in the hydrodynamic range, if you'll remember, that's when two surfaces are separ separated by a lubricating film. So the lubricating film is thick enough that none of the surface asperities come into contact with each other. After that, we get into what we call the mixed lubrication regime, where we have a surface film that predominantly um, allows uh, separation of the two surfaces, but in some circumstances, maybe the peaks of the asperities come into contact with each other, and you get a small amount of what we might call welding occurring. Finally, we have bound, uh, boundary lubrication, which is where there's basically no separation provided by the actual oil, and all the lubrication is done at the surface. So we have two surfaces sliding against each other, and there's a lot of contact, and therefore a lot of welding. So what we are ideally kind of want in these mixed and boundary lubrication regimes is to have something that can coat um, the uh, surfaces of the two uh, lubricated elements, and this will act as kind of a, a barrier, right, that will prevent um, excessive wear. All right, so enter additives. So if the lubricant film is not thick enough to be able to separate two surfaces, then we need to rely on the additive package to help out with uh, lubrication. And so what we want is an additive which is suspended or soluble in the oil, but that is attracted to metal surfaces. So somehow we have to get these additives to attract to the metal and fall out of solution, if you like, with the actual oil. So the way that we achieve this is through a structure which we've seen a lot before, in which we have a polar head and a non-polar tail. We can think of this as being a head that is attracted to metal and a tail which is attracted to the oil. What that means is that if you have these additives in the bulk lubricant and we have some kind of metallic surface, that head is going to be attracted to the metallic surface. And over time, you'll get a buildup of these additives that will coat the metal surface. We've seen this before. So we talked a little bit about it in the ZDDP video where we talked about zinc in engine oils and the way that they form sacrificial um, tribofilms. So in that instance, what we form is a layer that's between 50 and 150 nanometers thick, and it's made up of a few different compounds. So there's a kind of an iron sulfide layer, there's a, 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 an iron or metal polyphosphate layer, and then there's a metal polyphosphate layer on top. Now, in the case of the ZDDP molecule, right? if you remember, we said it was commonly referred to as zinc di uh, di diethylphosphate, but in reality we should be calling it zinc dialkyl diethylphosphate because the phosphate is really kind of the active ingredient. And what you can see here is that um, zinc itself is kind of the metal. So ZDDP is very common, but there are also things like copper DDPs and there are boron based anti wear agents as well. So there's some kind of metal, and that's what over on the left is the, the M, right? So a, a metal polyphosphate, for example. In this instance, would be a zinc polyphosphate. But if we substitute it out for some other metal, it would form that kind of uh, phosphate layer. Then we also have the P, right? So that's the, the phosphorus, which helps form the phosphate layer. And we also have sulfur, which helps us with the the iron sulfide layer that's right at the base. So ZDDP, even though it's not strictly speaking an EP um, additive molecule, gives us a window into what we might desire out of an EP molecule. So typically in ZDDP, the active ingredients, if you like, are um, both phosphorus 
and sulfur. And what we find in practice with most EP additives is that they're often, you know, polysulfides, dithiocarbamates, um, you know, amine thiophosphates or something like that. So often they're, they're sulfur or phosphorus containing compounds. So what distinguishes an anti-wear additive from an EP additive? So anti-wears form uh, sacrificial films. So you can imagine if you know we're looking at this on the micron scale and we have two surfaces that are rubbing against each other, what we want is for that sacrificial film to be rubbed away. What happens with EP additives is that they're more chemically active. So rather than just forming a surface layer, they actually interact with the top layer of the metal and form um, you know, phosphates. Now, they require a lot more energy to do this, which is why EP additives are often uh, what we might call thermally active additives. So they require some temperature or some pressure in, in order to uh, become active. Now, the other thing that happens is that when we have wiping, generally um, the top layer of the metal will also be removed. So that's part of the difference is that there's kind of a polishing effect that goes on. So if we were to visualize that, um, let's say for example, uh, like this, as the two metal surfaces slide past each other, and as they continue to do that um, time and time again, eventually what's gonna happen is you get a polishing and the surface asperities, the peaks and troughs are actually gonna get lower. So, so the EP, EP additives actually act to sort of change the, the actual uh, finish of the lubricated surfaces. So that's one of the big differences between um, anti-wear additives and what you might call EP additives. Now, the reality is that there's no strict definition of what is an anti-wear and, and, and what is an EP. EPs function very much like anti-wear additives, but they're probably more chemically aggressive. One thing that we've got to look out for is um, its interaction with yellow metals. So often you'll hear about EP gear oils being unsuitable for use in worm drives. Now the reason for this is because usually the worm wheel, so in this picture that's on the bottom, they're usually made of some kind of yellow metal, you know, a, a bronze or a brass style um, alloy that contains copper. And the one thing that we know about sulfur and phosphorus is that they tend to uh, be quite aggressive to yellow metals. This is particularly true at higher temperatures. So the higher the temperature is, the more active the sulfur and the phosphorus are going to be, and the more likely it is that it's going to attack yellow metals. So how can we do kind of a rough check on, an, uh, you know, let's say an EP gear oil to see whether it's going to harm our application? Well, one way of doing it is to look at the ASTM D130 test. So that's what we call a copper corrosion test, where effectively what happens is we take, um, you know, a sample of oil and we put a copper strip into it. After a certain amount of time um, and under uh, fixed temperatures, so I think at 40 degrees and 100 degrees, we then remove that sample uh, and compare it against the test strip. In this case, um, you know, it represents the color 2A and that gives us our copper corrosion score. Pretty much anything below a 1B on this would mean that uh, if your application has yellow metals in it, whether that's, you know, the actual gears themselves or in some bearings, then an, you know this, this specific EP gear oil would not be for you. Now, there are you know, new EP additives that are coming onto the market. So some that are, for example, um, solely phosphorus based, um, may be uh, less aggressive to yellow metals uh, than are the sulfur based ones. So you know, there is a there's sort of a range of EP gear oils and it's not really a, a one size fits all approach. But anyway, I hope that's been a helpful introduction to EP gear oils and how they act. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.